the rhythm and blues name, Rick Rude, we were in the locker room and we were about five minutes before going out for a TV USA cable TV match. Uh, I think we were going to ma- wrestle Marty Jannetty and Shawn Michaels back then. Anyway, Greg, they brought the hair dye and he dyed his hair black and they were going to put, they had finished, Greg was pretty much finished with his run uh, and his singles matches and was not doing a whole lot. And they, Greg has always been a stable around there because he would, you know, him and Pat got along really well. And Pat Patterson, I'm talking about who was doing most of the booking and they always kept Greg, uh, you know, kept him a job no matter what. Even after the dream team, he went into singles when he went, him and Beefcake were together. Then he was not doing a whole lot, so they now they they wanted to do something, so they rejuvenated him and I with his tag team, which I thought was really good. We had a ton of heat because his black hair. But Rick Rude was sitting there, and Pat said, we need a name for you guys. we got to call you something. And Rick Rude said, well, he pointed to me. He said, he's rhythm, and he's always half asleep. He's blues. Pat said, that's it, rhythm and blues. And he went and he told uh, Gorilla Monsoon, that's it. That's her name, Rhythm and Blues. Rhythm and Blues was scheduled to take the belts from the hearts. Uh, at Sometime shortly before or after, the Road Warriors, once Vince got the Road Warriors secured and they were coming in, our chances of getting the belts, he'd promised them then to the Road Warriors. That was their deal. He had told us we were going to do a program and win the belts from the hearts. He said, you guys have got more heat than anybody. Vince loved heels that had heat. And with me being the razzmatazz guy, the show business, and now I've influenced this real wrestler, Greg Valentine, this tough guy, to dye his hair and Greg to stand there and pick a guitar. It was like the people hated me more, and now they hated him more than he could have ever done as Greg the Hammer Valentine. And then Jimmy Hart being there. So the wheels were very good for that tag team. And we would have been a good tag team with the belts. But once they got to Road Warriors, there was too many tag teams. And he, he just, he was doing business with the uh, Powers of Pain. He had Demolition. He had so many tag teams that we were behind the eight ball. And you actually did main event a few shows, I remember. Yes. Uh, particularly, there was a very good yeah. crowd at the, uh, the Civic Center in Ottawa. You had a two out of yeah. three falls match with the Hurt Foundation. You drew decent houses uh, in, in those years, too. Did you yep. ever wrestle uh, Legion of Doom? No. no. No, the only other tag team we wrestled uh, was uh, the Bushwhackers. That was pretty much it, and that was a comedy match. So it was a fun a fun time. It was, a, yeah, fun. But we tried, Greg and I tried to make the best out of this tag team as we could in the ring. He, he really didn't like having his hair black, and he didn't really, really get into – what he could have put now he says i wish i'd have put more into it he says he says he wish he would have put more into that tag team because they might have took a better look at us does uh do you think he has problems with depression all the time extremely uh i I mean there's not a day goes by that this man's not depressed about something do you think if uh he'd have kind of a better attitude he he would have gone further in, in his later years? I think so. I, I think he wouldn't have caused some of the problems that he's caused for some promoters and done some of the things he's done. And, you know, uh, I mean, he even went the religious route at one time and, and was toting the Bible, but he said he couldn't stop double booking. He couldn't stop lying. I said, well, you don't have to have the Bible to stop double booking and stop lying. Just stop doing it. You know. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, we've always had a good rapport and everything. And uh, there was occasions where he's done some things where I even called him and I said, look, you know, if you don't take care of this guy, you're never going to work there again. And uh, it, it's happened a couple of times. He said, can you can you cover this up and take care of this guy for me? I said, I can't until you call the guy and pay him back his money or something. 